piss off in the writer. <laughs> it's a good nutcracker. <laughs> you really get to speak Japanese. Yeah, I, every time it was it was time to say that line, still couldn't get it. And I'm, and I'm leaning over to, to Hero, who's the guy that played the, 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 the host. I kept, I kept asking him, I couldn't hold him. <laughs> Yeah, the Japanese, I just couldn't get it. It was, it was such a surreal kind of uh, scene to shoot because it, it was so out of our, that whole episode the, with the, the, the sitcom and the... Did y'all like it? What has been y'all's We liked that one. We read it and it was such a departure from our, our usual. Story. So outside the box, I was kind of nervous. I'm like, ooh, is this, is this jumping the shark yet again? <laughs> How did y'all like real Ghostbusters? That was kind of a shout out to y'all guys. That's kind of funny. Those guys were hilarious. I don't know where they got the idea for that show. That was, they just threw stuff against the wall and so it stuck. We had a tough time keeping it together when Ernie was kind of doing his, this is the cemetery. And we're sitting over, we're supposed to walk over, and we just like, check it out. So Jensen and I are like, we can't laugh, we're about to enter the shot, we can't laugh. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go into my own? I had to go back and watch those episodes to make sure I hadn't done it like that. I was like, oh no. Yeah, you, might, you might notice in like, you know, their coverage, you'll see Jared's shoulder actually shaking because he's going... Which is not uncommon. <laughs> Was no. that? Yes, yeah, we had Jim Carrey. <laughs> uh, he's uh, he's going to reoccur. He fits us in right between his uh, his animated films. Uh, he was also No, that was, that was, no. <laughs> no. Did it look him a lot? He was good. The CW does not have that kind of money. <laughs> or if they do, they don't give it to us. <laughs> he's going to be Well, they, they did, but then Tom he's Holland's still works like working on this issue. Uh, I liked your commercial and uh, changing channels. <laughs> My commercial? <laughs> there were like yoga people and other. <laughs> it's simply mine. Yeah, that was a funny one. My mom was like sort of texting me during the episode. She's like, this is really funny. Like, y'all are riding a bike. And she's like, uh. <laughs> Once again, the guy, the guy, the, um, gentleman I was talking to, I was like, well, I get hit in the nuts, I get, uh, you know, herpes commercial. Uh, yeah. I'm a car. I'm like a man. Which is cool. Which is cool. I grew up watching Night Rider. I had like a little Night Rider, Night Rider, um, little thing when you were a kid. Episodes of CSI did you suffer through to... No, 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 no. Here's, here's the, if you go on YouTube, uh, they, it, God love those YouTube users because they've actually comprised an yeah. entire montage yeah. of David Caruso doing the glass, the one-liners in the glasses. So all we really had to watch was that 30-second clip. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. And then most people. It was so perfect. It was. We're actors. <laughs> What's funny is that Bob Singer, um, we all know, he was like, have you ever seen Jim Carrey and David Letterman doing Caruso? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, that was your Caruso. He was like, you were doing Jim yeah. Carrey, doing David Caruso. Yeah, Darren was doing the Jim Carrey's version of Caruso. I just didn't feel comfortable channeling David. I didn't want to go there with my psyche. I didn't know if I'd ever heard actually go there. Yeah, I didn't know. I heard rumors. It's a dark road. Yeah. What's funny is it actually has been a running gag on Supernatural, on set of Supernatural for like years. And whenever there's sort of a line that's a bit on the nose, we'll kind of do the, uh, the, the plane crashed here. You know? <laughs> so it's funny that we had a chance to put that on camera. Uh, and apparently... Uh, I, actually, I actually got that and snuck that line in. Yes, that's right. The plane crashed here. That's right. That was not in the script. <laughs> <laughs> also, right, no talent douchebaggery. That was, uh, that was not in the script. <laughs> Apparently, uh, I'm gonna get a wild hair. 
Apparently, Sean Rhimes created David Cruz. Yeah. David Cruz. Which? He said, I'm very passionate about David yeah. Cruz. <laughs> so yeah. We have a friend, uh, or we have somebody who works on set, and she's friends with uh, Sean Rhimes, who created Grey's Anatomy, her assistant. And she's like, apparently, Sean loved it, like, had a great time watching Dr. Sexy. And watching <laughs> she had some kind of fangirl reaction. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. Uh, I like the doctor, doctor, doctor. <laughs> he stood there. He, he perfectly stood there, like waiting for. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. It was good. I have something to say. Uh, there's going to be an auction later today, and I grew up uh, in, in San Antonio, Texas, doing like black plays. And, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. Um, and my mom is a teacher still in San Antonio. And um, the there's UIL is the school board. It's called University Interscholastic League. And it's 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 the kids that go and compete in plays, compete in drama events. And so she's she's fundraising some money. So I figured I'd, I'd kind of help her out. And all the money is going to go to her students. But I'm wearing uh, Sam Winchester's season three watch. I'm a big watch fan. I have every watch I've ever had in a show or a movie going back to the first pilot when I was 17 years old. So I have Sam's season one, two, three, four, five watches. Um, so I'm walking in with season three watch right now, but I'll be auctioning in for, um, for my mom's students um, tonight. So it's going to a good cause. Every dollar, every cent is going to go. So these kids can compete in, in what I competed in in school. And, uh, so just to let y'all guys know, when y'all see a watch, it's going to be... And he's also auctioning off his pants. <laughs> It probably won't go for nearly as much as the Unless someone can fit me. That was sort of a tangent. <laughs> You're so technically savvy. I know. You think after all this time, but nobody Absolutely. 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 Have we run out of material to talk about? <laughs> we can dance. <laughs> What's up? Really good job. In, in the end. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was that was probably the hardest episode I've done on the series. That was um, and and you guys should know um, the uh, the guy that played me when I wasn't playing me. Um, they they had actually gone through a, a casting process to see if they could find an actor. To come and, and play. Um, <laughs> to come and play opposite me, and so I met with like three or four guys actually, and then you know just kind of wrapped out with them, and, uh, and, and we ended up going with this one guy, and, and um, he showed up. And the first the first scene that we shot was the uh, where Future Dean pulls up in the jeep and then shoots the guy in the, in the face, and then. Yeah. Um, so that scene was shot first, and, and I did it with this guy. He just, just didn't, just didn't, couldn't. I, I, it just wasn't working, right? So we immediately, the producers were like, "It's not working. It's, it, it's just not, you know, it's not getting what we want." And uh, so I said, "Listen, why don't we just get the guy who next to me has played Dean Winchester more than anybody, which is Todd Scott, my stunt double." So Todd Scott, who is an amazing stunt guy, and he's made me look like a badass since Dark Angel, um, actually, um, who has never done on-camera lines or anything like that. I begged him and he was like, all right, man, but, you know, I'm going to warn you. I, I don't know what to expect. And I mean, this guy was, he, he sat there in my trailer and was like, took it so seriously and, and was running lines with me. And I mean, we're talking like eight pages of dialogue a day for like three or four days. It was just Dean on the call sheet. So it was just me and him, uh, all the stuff in the cabin and, and, and stuff like that, and it was it was just a mind boggle because I'm so used to as just like an actor learning my lines. I think Jared's, I think we've kind of fallen into the same, uh, um, or, or yeah, it was just a, a routine is that we learn our lines and then we get on set and the scene kind of comes together organically. And, you know, we, I react off of, what, off of what he's doing and he reacts off of what I'm doing, and that's just kind of where we find the nuances. As Kim Manners used to like always said. He was like, all right, boys, find those nuances. And that's what we get. Generally, those happen while you're working on the scene, while the scene's happening. Um, I didn't have that. So that crush that I've been using, I guess it's not really a crush, it's just... <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Uh, was gone, and I, it was really strange for me because I had to, I had to then think about what I was going to do on that side of the camp, on that side of, of like for future dean, and react accordingly as this dean. But I hadn't done that yet, so then I had to. After that, I could turn around, get dressed, and then remember what I had done, and then act accordingly. <laughs> My brain was soup after the end of that. And I called Eric after that episode and I was like, hey buddy, just so you know, I'm phoning in the next five episodes. <laughs> so. <laughs>